convicted rapist is accused of terrorizing his victim from his prison cell. Every year, every two years, every so often, you know, she gets re-victimized by this defendant um, because he just won't give up. And now the prosecutors who put him behind bars are breaking their silence, speaking only to non-investigates out of frustration. And they believe a dangerous felon is using a cell phone and fake social media accounts from a prison in the panhandle. That's right, a phone in prison, cell phone. Investigative reporter Darlene Jones first started questioning the Department of Corrections about this case three weeks ago after spending months reviewing the case. Darlene joins us live in the studio. And Darlene, prosecutors call this a public safety failure. Greg, one of the most bizarre stories I have ever reported on. They provided us with proof they sounded the alarm to the State Department of Corrections months ago. It wasn't until we started asking tough questions that they heard from the Inspector General's office, which now confirms it's investigating. Julia Lynch is a lead prosecutor overseeing thousands of sex crimes and child abuse cases in Brevard County. But there is one file she has to keep opening, even though the defendant, Christopher Wood, was convicted of rape and kidnapping 10 years ago and is now serving 50 years at Jefferson Correctional Institute. Wood tying up court time with a new motion he filed this summer, claiming he has new evidence in the case, a witness who was never interviewed. We realized that this was something that was made up once again. Prosecutors believe it's part of his effort to continue terrorizing his victim, but their research uncovering an even bigger problem in state prison. I'm amazed that he's able to have a cell phone. It was a frantic call from the victim tipping them off, describing a string of disturbing Facebook messages. She and her daughters had been uh, receiving messages from this person who called themselves Lily Smith. Facebook records show some were sent using a mobile device. It was all detailed in this letter prosecutors sent to the DOC, trying to prove private messages from that Lily Smith account were really sent by Christopher Wood. Another account under Chris Moore uses the photo of a U.S. congressman from Wisconsin who had no idea until we told him. The DOC insisting through this email Wood has no cell phone. Prosecutors got a different story when the DOC finally responded to its letter this month, days after nine investigates started asking questions and eight months after the letter was sent. I said, well, I want to make sure Christopher Wood, as well as in other inmates, don't have a cell phone. And the, basically it was like, well, good luck, they do. Even recorded prison calls detailed in that letter haven't been enough. In one, his aunt questions why he's suddenly calling her collect. Did you lose your phone? No, I've been f***ing. They moved me to a different dorm. Oh. Phones are set up a little different down here. It's enough to force anyone to question why no one answered the call for real action from prosecutors who have dedicated hundreds of hours to one defendant who has already been convicted. You're giving these guys literally tools or weapons to commit future crimes out there. They are frustrated. The state's attorney office is further frustrated by the fact they have no jurisdiction over this alleged crime. They tell me it's on the DOC or perhaps the Jefferson County Prosecutor's Office to investigate. The bigger question too, Greg and Martha, is how widespread this cell phone problem really is in our state prisons.